Good morning, I'm Wayward Worm, and welcome to my channel. And welcome to the last episode of The Stolen Land, episode 20, Cleanup. Lucian stood there breathing hard, looking down at his defeated foe. He then pointed his sword at Akaros. You there, you're on thin ice. Your actions are enough to warrant us not immediately killing you, but not much more than that. Akaros nodded, clearly not blaming them for that. Drop your sword and your shield, then remove your armor. We'll tie you up until we have fully cleared the fort. Do you understand? Akaros nodded again and started to comply with Lucian's order. Yes, I do. Good. When you've removed your armor, we'll be tying you up. Now, is there anything you would like to share on what awaits us inside the fort? Lucian was not sure if he was going to trust anything that this traitor had to say on the matter or not, but he figured he'd ask the question anyway. The worst, he learns nothing, but most likely he'll learn if this person was to be trusted or not. Akros looked around at the bodies laying on the ground. I think the only thing you have to worry about is the old man. He took a moment and then continued. The stag lord kept an old man on the edge of death in the cellar. Rumor is that he's the stag lord's father, and also that he wields magic. We didn't interact with him all that much. He finished removing his armor shortly after, and Petra walked up to him and tied his hands and feet together. She tied it in such a way that he could semi-comfortably sit on one of the nearby barrels of water, but he would struggle to do much more. She then went over to his armor and shield, checking all the edges. After a thorough check, she picked up his sword. This is mine until we get back. I'm satisfied that you cannot cut the ropes with your armor or shield, but I would be a fool to let you keep this sword. Akaros simply nodded his assent to what she said. Not that he had any choice in the matter. They entered the fort through the opening that the owl bear came from and they walked right into a drafty room that was crammed full of crates, barrels, and boxes around the edges of the room. Hammocks interspersed in there implied that this served as a sleeping area, at least for most of the bandits. A large iron portcullis lay on the ground in front of the gap in the wall. Umbria pointed at the gap. That must have been where the owl bear was kept. The others nodded in agreement. The middle of the room was filled with makeshift furniture, which was fairly covered with dirty dishes. On one table sat a partially eaten roast turkey, while another table held the remains of some sort of card game. Lucian shook his head at the sight. Disgusting. They headed through the room that they were in, into another room that was clearly a storeroom of some kind, with a bed tucked away on one side. The room was much cleaner, and the bed was impeccably made, with a lantern and a small leather-bound book lying on a crate next to the bed. They then entered a room that was clearly the stag lords. It reeked of stale alcohol, and furs covered all the walls in the bed. They found an armory, and an area that appeared to be a roasting pit. Near the roasting pit, they found the semi-hidden stairs that went down to the cellar. Armed with the knowledge that there was someone down there, they managed to quickly dispatch him as he was beginning to cast his spells. Probably of protection. In the cellar, they found the bulk of the horde. Most of it was common trade goods, most of which were most likely taken from Oleg throughout some amount of time. There is also a large bag filled with jewelry, as well as a chest containing more coins and they decided they could count at the moment. Lucian led, then led them back outside and straight to Akaros. It's time for you to explain yourself. Akaros met Lucian's gaze and held it for a few seconds, before finally breaking it and beginning his tale with a deep exhalation. My name is Akaros Ismort. I grew up the son of simple farmers in Teldor. My parents wanted nothing more than for me to spend my life as a protector of our town, as a paladin of Arastil. So, I joined the church and became a paladin. 
I was a very young man at that time, and I had to make the choice that many young men who rashly commit their lives to a cause such as a knightly order at a very young age before they understand what they're giving up. To glaze over what happened, it ended with me murdering two townsfolk in my church. With such a blatant violation of my vows, I ran. Eventually, I made it to the River Kingdoms and lived as a bandit, a vagabond, a criminal, and various other similar things over many years, giving into my rage over what had happened. About a year or two ago, I started hearing of the Stag Lord. At that point, I was still not sure where I needed to be or what I needed from life. So I traveled here to pledge myself to the Stag Lord, hoping he could give me direction and a purpose that had been missing from my life for decades. I was expecting a noble bandit lord who was going to carve out a kingdom safe from the machinations of the nobility and the rich merchant classes who pretended to be nobility. At that, he let out a rough bark of a laugh, laced with anger and bitterness. Instead, I found a drunkard who lived in violence and debauchery. All he did was drink and exact his rage on those who did anything even slightly to annoy him. For some reason, he took a liking to me, and rather quickly I had displaced Dovin, the man I killed, as his second in command, and I've hated every moment of my time here. Lucian listened to everything Akros had to say, slightly nodding along as the man spoke. Okay, wait here while we discuss what to do with you. The party moved out of easy earshot of Akros before... Lucian simply looked at his three companions and said, Well? Petra looked back at Akaros before she voiced her opinion. Kill him. By his own admission, he has betrayed everything he has ever pledged himself to. I don't think we can ever fully trust him. He will eventually betray us as he has done to everything else. Tiber shook his head. He is a lost man who has been floundering. We should forgive him as Sarenrae would have us do and give him another chance. There's more to his story than he is letting on. And I believe he is at a point in his life that he wants to redeem himself. He has paid his penance for those murders he committed all those years ago. Lucian looked at Umbria. Well, we seem to have one vote for killing him and one vote for forgiveness. What is your opinion? She shrugged. If we kill him, only we and the gods will know that we killed him cold blood. And if he turned his back on Arastil as he says he did, I'm not sure the gods would mind. If we forgive him and let him go, well, then he'll mostly likely be a part of, a, of the small bandit class that now has no direction, even if they don't know it yet. Maybe he rises up and becomes a leader to them. Maybe he fades away, either out of this area or is just an ineffectual bandit. If we take him with us, he'll probably latch onto Jahud and work toward becoming a paladin again, if he is being honest about what he wants. Any which way I look at it, he pretty much stops being our problem once we untie him. Lucian finally nodded. I agree with Umbria and Tiber. I think we should take him back with us, but we should not fully trust him. We'll keep his arms and armor and let him possibly earn them back. When we return to Oleg's, he'll be given to Jahud, but not his things. He can be Jahud's acolyte. With that, he strode back to Akaros. We will untie you. We're keeping your arms and armor for now. You can join us and attempt to show us that we should trust you with them. Or you can leave and go wherever. But if you choose that, you are giving up your arms and armor. What say you to that? Well, it sounds like the best choice is to join you for now. Lucian nodded. Good. Petra untied the man. He then walked over to the Stag Lord's corpse and stripped it. When he was done, he propped him up and beheaded him. Tiber, come help me put the body into the water. Tiber came over, and between the two of them, they managed to carry the body to the nearby river and toss it in. As soon as the body touched the water, Davak, the undead creature they had encountered not all that long ago, burst forth and wrapped his arms around the body, dragging it with him. 
After that rather grisly showing, his rancour washed up at Lucian's feet. Lucian looked over to Tiber. Well, that was something. Tiber agreed, picking up the weapon. That it was. But I do believe that this weapon shows he's at rest now, and is our reward for following through with what we said we would. They took the bandits' horses and loaded them up with all the loot they could carry, not worrying about overloading the horses yet. Once back to the camp they had made, they redistributed the gear as needed so all eight horses could easily make the trip back to Oleg's. As they were hitting the point where the fort would be out of their sight for good, Lucian took one last look back before proclaiming, We will be back soon. That will be the seat of my new nation. With that, they started down the far side of the hill they were standing on as they moved east along the Shrike River. Lucian's plan was to follow the Shrike River until the river crossing at the mouth of the Thorn River, at which point they would follow the Thorn River until it entered the Narl Marches, and at that point they would follow the edge of the Narl Marches until they reached the point where it's just a straight shot east to Oleg's. The trip took them four full days of marching. In fact, on the fourth day, they actually marched for several hours past when they would have normally stopped for the night to make it to Oleg's on that day. Oleg rushed out to meet them when they arrived. You are back! That is wonderful! He took a look at the extra horses all laden with supplies and then Akaros. I take it there is good news? Was about all he could manage. Lucian nodded grimly. Yes. The stag lord is dead. With that pronouncement, he took out the head of the stag lord. Where's the sword lord? Keston walked over at this point. Gone. They left shortly after you did. Don't worry, I know what to do. First thing in the morning, I'll take one of my men, and the two of us will ride to Restoff and present the head to the sword lords. They will then sign the charter, and I will bring it back to me. At that point, they'll put together a cab. At that point, they'll put together a caravan to head back this way. Do you know where you're going to put your seat? And what you're going to call your new barony? Lucian replied simply, Yes. The Stag Lord's Fort will be torn down, and I'll build a new fort there. This seat will be called Vetluna, and it will be the seat of the barony of Racina. Kesta nodded. Be it so known. Thank you so much for watching episode 20 of the stolen land it is the last episode in this series it also marks the end of the first series that i've ever started on this channel i started it about two and a half years ago i think it's been slightly over by now and a lot has changed in the time since i started it these have been a really eventful two and a half years and not not necessarily in a good way um, one of the things that changed is when I first started I wouldn't have done this um, I would I in fact I had this camera that I have now um, when I started my YouTube channel but I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done it. So that's something that changed. Um, I actually started this series in the great in the basement of my grandma's home uh, about a week after she had died. So. I'm glad that I was able to to uh, complete one of the things that that I started at in that basement. I spent but, but in my lifetime, my grandma lived in three different places. Of those three different places, they each had basements, and I have a series of memories that are 
that are tied to each basement. So, I'm really glad. I'm really glad that I've been able to share this with, with everyone who's been along for this ride. Thank you so much for that. Next week, I will be starting another series to replace this. Uh, I am most likely going to be doing Rivers Run Red in the near future. That is the next episode, or that's the next um, adventure in the Kingmaker Adventure Path. So, these four characters will be able to continue. 